Previously on Bar Talking Cocktails. I am Dracula. Welcome. What have I been up to all these years? I've been bartending. I want to make you a cocktail, the vamp. You make this cocktail, it is guaranteed not to suck. <laughs> oh, you look a little lost. You also look very familiar. My name is Bruce, and I've been working bar in hell for an eternity. In that time, I've learned a trick or two that I'd like to pass on to you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this spectacular Halloween edition of Bar Talk and Cocktails. We've got a lot of ground to uncover. <laughs> Come here, look into my eyes. I used to know a vampire actor. He gave up because he couldn't find a role he could really sink his teeth into. <laughs> On reflection, vampires aren't that scary. One of my favorite portrayals of me in the movies was played by Bela Frank Dezo Blasco better known as Bela Lugosi. He was born in 1882 in Lugos, Hungary, located near the western border of the Transylvania Alps in what is now Lugoj, Romania. But long before Bela's portrayal of the immortal, legendary me, <laughs> Count Dracula, he was a stage actor with the traveling theater companies. During the First World War, he voluntarily enlisted and served in the Hungarian Ski Patrol of the 43rd Division of Austro-Hungarian Army. Over the next year and a half, he fought against Russian forces near the Austrian border. Wounded on three separate occasions, he won medal for bravery at the Russian front. Upon healing from his injuries, Lugosi left the armed forces and resumed work with the National Theatre, performing everything from Shakespeare to romantic lead roles in many classic plays, totaling 172 stage performances. So, end of World War I, Hungary was embroiled in political problems and Bela participated in the revolution. He had taken an active role on behalf of the Actors' Union. The ruling party, well, they did not like that, and by 1919, he was forced to flee the country. Eventually, he found safe passage to the United States aboard the merchant ship as crewman. He landed in New Orleans and made his way to New York and quickly joined the American theater. Not knowing how to speak English posed a wee bit of problem. Unknown to everyone, Bela memorized his entire parts phonetically. Now that is amazing feat. His big break came in 1927 when he landed a lead role in a Broadway production of Dracula, a play based on the novel by Bram Stoker. That show ran for 33 weeks on Broadway and then went on tour for two more years. By 1931, Bela Lugosi was chosen for the title role of universal screen version of Dracula. Oh, I love his sinister yet elegant portrayal of me. With the worldwide success of Dracula, Bela Lugosi was teamed up with another man of horror, Boris Karloff. Although Bela wanted to break away from the typecast of horror roles, it was not to be. He went on to star in other horror films like Murders in the Rue Morgue, White Zombie, Island of Lost Souls, and even played Frankenstein in Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, the role that Boris Karloff made famous in 1931. Funny story, Lugosi originally turned down the role of Frankenstein because it, it had no speaking lines, just lots of grunting. In total, Lugosi appeared in 103 films, 
But as time marched on, Bella had seen his career degenerate over the previous two decades. He started taking morphine injections because of shooting pains in his legs. Without morphine, along with methadone and Demerol chasers, he said he could not work. He just took drugs. He didn't eat. He got sicker and sicker. Eventually, he was committed to Metropolitan State Hospital in Los Angeles. And when he was released from the hospital, he had been reduced to playing a sad parody of himself in some of the shoddiest B-horror films ever made, made by none other than Ed Wood, who is notably the worst filmmaker of all time. I don't know, though. I kind of like Ed Wood's work. It's so bad, it is good. Bela Lugosi's last film was Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space, a twisted tale of extraterrestrials who seek to stop humanity from creating a doomsday weapon that could destroy the universe. The aliens implement Plan 9, a scheme to resurrect the Earth's dead. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. Plan 9. Ah, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long-distance electrode shot into the pineal pituitary glands of recent dead. While filming the movie, Bela Lugosi died of a heart attack. That was on August 6, 1956. Rather than refilm Lugosi's footage or rewrite his parts that had yet to be filmed, Ed Wood hired his wife's chiropractor, Tom Mason. His wife's chiropractor. Tom Mason as a stand-in for Lugosi, even though Mason was several inches taller, thinner, and much younger than Lugosi. In an attempt to hide his, the height difference, Ed Wood instructed Mason to constantly hunch over and keep his face hidden behind a cloak. Too funny, too funny. <laughs> Fittingly, Bela Lugosi was buried in one of his Dracula capes, kind of like the one I am wearing. In the grotto at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. Okay, let us make the Bela Lugosi cocktail. The perfect cocktail for the undead. I make cocktail now, but first I need to change. I need to change into something more comfortable. <laughs> I need to change into uh, bartender Bruce because, well, people are afraid of uh, getting drink made by Dracula. Very afraid. So I change now. Oh yeah, that's much better. <laughs> So, what brings you to my bar, anyway? What, you don't remember me? Ah... Uh, well, no, frankly, no. No? No. Do you remember this? Oh, that. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I've, I've been a lot of people in my lifetime. I'm sure you have. I don't know what you're complaining about. I obviously gave you immortality. I don't want immortality. I want the... Drink. I think we can make that happen. We're going to make you a Bella Lugosi cocktail. Beautiful. First thing we want to do is grab our mixing glass. Okay. And uh, we're going to start with some uh, rye whiskey. Uh, today I'm using a Sazerac rye. Named after the uh, Sazerac Coffee House on Royal Street in New Orleans, Sazerac Straight Rye Whiskey entices your nose with caramel and vanilla. At 45% alcohol by volume, or 90 proof, on the palate it's bold with woody undertones and heat. Vanilla and oak are up front. The finish rounds off with hints of nutmeg, black pepper and cloves that dissolve into sweet orchard fruit as it fades to a soft oaky finish. 
and we want one ounce. Yeah, rye whiskey. Give it a smell. Do you like rye whiskey? Ah, uh, it makes me want to take off my panties. Oh, <laughs> maybe we should put more uh, rye whiskey in there. Uh, next thing is uh, Dubonnet. Uh, Dubonnet, one ounce. And followed by uh, Cointreau. We want uh, a quarter ounce, um, or I guess a one and a half, one and a half teaspoons. Next thing is to add some ice. Ooh. And stir it up. Get it nicely uh, diluted. Get it nice and chilled. There we go. About 15, 20 seconds or so. Looks good. Get a nice polished glass here for you, baby. Oh, thank you. And put a single ice cube in our glass. A nice clear ice cube there for you. And just strain it out. Oh yeah. And uh we're going to uh, garnish with a nice piece of orange rind. <laughs> Trim it up. Give it a little spritz over top. Oh yeah. Drop her in our drink. And uh, top it with uh, some orange bitters. Three dashes. I'm pretty bitter. <laughs> and there you have it. Mm. You enjoy that, baby. Salut. That's strong. How did you know I like the Dubonnet? I like the smell of the orange, the taste of the bitters. Mm. It was a very good drink, thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Um, do you forgive me? All right, uh, so you want another one? Keep talking. Okay, we'll make you another one. One ounce of uh, rye whiskey. Happy Halloween! So you know, I got these beets in my garden mm -hmm. and I got to harvest them really soon because, well, winter's coming. Mm. And um, you know, beets are so nutritious for you, uh, so good, um, they actually, you know, make blood. All right guys, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. I think we can call it for tonight. That was a good shoot. I think we'll have a pretty good Halloween episode this year. So you guys can, you know, cut it with the, the vampire shtick. And what? Annoying accents. You don't yeah. like my accent? Well, you think you're better than us? No. <laughs> this is nice drink. Go make yourself a Bella Lugosi. Subscribe here. Go make some other Halloween drinks. Cheers. That wasn't perfect. <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs>